where news comes first. This is ABC 7 Extra. Welcome to ABC 7 Extra Sunday edition. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Ross. Tonight we bring you part two of our runoff election preview. Election day is this Tuesday, May 28th. And for the next half hour, we'll hear from the two candidates in the runoff for El Paso District Attorney. Joining me now, Alma Trejo, former judge of County Criminal Court Number 1, and James Montoya, former Assistant District Attorney and current Deputy Public Defender here in El Paso. Thank you both for coming on the show tonight. Ms. Trejo, let's start with you. Tell our viewers about your professional background and why you want to be our next District Attorney. First of all, I started as an intern at the County Attorney's Office and then, uh, then I switched over to the District Attorney's Office. I started there in 1993. I started uh, with misdemeanor cases and then uh, felony. I was a felony prosecutor. I was uh, promoted and I became a felony um, team supervisor. Then after that I was promoted again and I was the head of the Rape and Child Abuse Unit. I tried about 80 cases, murders, uh, the majority a lot were also included acts, sexual assaults of children, uh, child murders, those type of cases, sex cases, and I also prosecuted a death penalty case. That death penalty case was a uh, prison gang murder that occurred here in our, in our jail, and uh, we prosecuted that case. Uh, Twelve people didn't feel that he was a I guess a future danger, so a life sentence was um, given by a jury. Um, there was also another co-defendant in that case, and we also prosecuted that case. We didn't seek the death penalty on that case. The reason, and then after that, um, after 10 years at the district attorney's office as a supervisor, I decided to run for county criminal court number one, do something different. Uh, and that enhanced my skills. Um, as a prosecutor, I only had to know the state side of a case. Now it gave me an overall uh, view. I now had to, uh, my skills were enhanced and now I had the opportunity to rule on cases and on misdemeanor cases. I did that for 21 years. Um, in 2015, I was elected by my fellow colleagues to lead the Council of Judges, which is a county department that is in charge of the budget as well as any employee um, issues such as HR, employee grievances, things like that, hiring, firing, and I did that for four years. I managed an $8 million budget uh, for 40 courts, and with that's the reason I'm running for this office. Uh, the district attorney's office has a $21.7 million budget, 170 employees, and I am the only person that has the experience that has managed these type of uh, budgets and hired, fired, been in charge of a large department. And for those reasons, I am running. Mr. Montoya, your turn, your professional qualifications and why you want to become our next TA. Sure. So when I went to law school, Mark, I, I knew I wanted to be a prosecutor. I knew I wanted to serve in the district attorney's office. As soon as I graduated, I came right back to El Paso. I started working at the district attorney's office very quickly thereafter. Uh, I was assigned to our homicide section. I worked on basically every murder, capital murder, uh, homicide that happened in El Paso from 2014 to 2020. I worked on Deputy Herrera's case. I worked on the Walmart shooting. Um, and, and in that time period, I tried over 60 jury trials. Half of them were for murder or capital murder. Uh, after I ran for district attorney four years ago unsuccessfully to Ms. Rosales, you know, I tried telling folks that bad things were going to happen. Bad things did happen. Uh, in, the, in the interim, uh, I spent two years working as a federal prosecutor, as an assistant U.S. attorney for the Department of Justice, uh, prosecuting violent crimes on Native American reservations in the state of Oklahoma. So that's murders, sexual assaults, major drug trafficking. Did that for about uh, a year and a half. Came back to El Paso. Right now, I'm a deputy public defender. You know, it's a position I never thought I'd, I'd hold. I never saw myself being a defense attorney. Uh, it's definitely been an eye-opening experience seeing things from, you know, the other side. And, uh, you know, to me, that's really shown me the importance of striking the right balance. Uh, you know, we're going to be tough where we need to be tough, but we're also going to be merciful where we can be. 
Um, aside from my experience as a litigator, as an, as an advocate in the courtroom, uh, I've served as a board member for Emergency Services District Number 1, which oversees the Volunteer Fire Department uh, out in the eastern part of El Paso County, the Horizon Volunteer Fire Department. It had a million dollar budget. I've served as a board member for the Yucca Council for the Boy Scouts of America. And uh, you know, I will tell you, in my opinion, my best qualification to be your district attorney is that I actually have a team of folks who are ready, willing, and able to come back and work with me to fix the district attorney's office. One person cannot fix the situation that we're in. You know, I, I think that's what we, we ended up here. Uh, Mr. Salas thought one person could do it all. And uh, so I tell voters out there, you know, when you're voting for James Montoya, you're not just voting for one person. You're voting for a whole team of experience. And I stand by that that is one of the things that, 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 that it does in fact make me the best candidate for this position. Now, Mr. Montoya, in one of your mailings to voters, you downplay the administrative side of being district attorney. So how would you prioritize a budget that's almost $22 million? Yeah, well, you know, Mark, CEOs, they're, they're, you know, when you're managing a large organization, you have a CEO, you have a COO, you have a CFO, okay? There are people whose job it is to manage and, and develop and, and, and work on the budget. The county has an entire fiscal department working on these issues. You know, I didn't go to law school uh, to be a, a CPA. I didn't go to law school to, to be a budget analyst. I went because I wanted to send bad people to the penitentiary. And right now, the district attorney's office, they need leadership and prosecution. You know, our last district attorney, Yvonne Rosales, said it's an administrative job, it's a management job. That is, in my opinion, that is totally wrong. That is why we got to where we are right now. The DA needs to be leading from the front. You know, right now, as a public defender, my boss, Kelly Childress, the head public defender, she's tried cases. And it's really important for office morale to see the leader, to see the elected official, to see the department head leading from the front. And I'll tell you right now, Mark, the, the, the morale in the DA's office right now is cratered. I mean, people are leaving left and right because there's not enough leadership. And so, you know, to me, uh, being in the courtroom, uh, showing your assistant prosecutors uh, your vision, what you want them to be doing, uh, your vision of justice that you're hearing from the community, to me that is far more important than uh, 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 some of the administrative issues facing the office. There, there, are, there are enough openings in the DA's office right now. The trouble is not the budget. The trouble, is they don't need more positions. They need to fill the ones that are open now. All right. Mr. Aho, uh, how would you prioritize your budget? Uh, one of the things I, I you know, want to point out to both of you is there's the most expensive case in the history of this district with the Walmart shooter. So how would you prioritize the budget knowing that there's that case on the horizon? Well, first of all, having done that type of work before and having addressed backlogs, um, what I would do is I would prioritize, I would separate, separate our low priority versus our high priority. Our resources, which is the $21 million, plus I believe there's an extra 2 to $3 million for the Walmart case, that's where our, our resources need to go. And my opponent wants to downplay the budget. I mean, what, <laughs> listening to him, what I think he wants to do is be an assistant DA because the district attorney is in charge of the whole office. It's, I can tell you that Jaime Esparza tried about 14 cases in 28 years. That should tell you the role of a district attorney. And in regards to prioritizing it, I will make sure that the taxpayer's money goes into the murders. Right now there's about 80, there's a backlog of about 80 murders, about 30 capital murders, and the Walmart case. And I don't even know the amount of the sex cases, DWIs, and all these other cases that need, be, need to be prioritized. I would, I would instantly go in there, and I'm looking forward to going in there, running lists and figuring out what needs to be taken off, um, what is low priority, let's dispose of those cases so that our budget and our resources and our people, and I can tell you, we both have teams ready to come in. I can tell you El Paso will not have any problems recruiting assistant DAs. We pay the, one of the most highest salaries in El Paso. The problem has never been recruitment. The problem has always been keeping somebody there. And that's why managerial and supervisory um, qualifications and, 
characteristics are so important. In this current administration, at least 32 assistant DAs have left. So it's not a recruitment problem. It's a how do you maintain, how do you supervise, how do you lead this type of office. It's a retention issue. Yes. All right. We'll continue our runoff preview with the candidates for El Paso District Attorney in a moment. You're watching ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition.